Hello, everyone. This is Alfio Sando. Today, I'm going to continue to talk about CUDA events and streams. If you like my video and this series, um, you, you can help to support me by subscribing my channel or click likes of the video. You can find the complete code of the video example and uh, the whole video list in video description below. So what's CUDA events? Um, it's synchronization markers that can be used to monitor the device progress and it can also be used to accurately measure timing and to synchronize CUDA streams. So here I will use one example to explain how to use CUDA events to accurately measuring the timing of your CUDA's program. As you may know, if you are not using uh, GPU only use CPU operations. There's already um, some C++ uh, C++ libraries around to help you the timer the whole programs you do. But for CUDA programming, you need to rely on the CUDA events things um, that those C++ libraries cannot tell uh, how how long of your program to run on the CUDA. And this example is kind of uh, simple examples. I only implement uh, the add functions by giving A and B array and put the result into the C array eventually. The only little bit difference is that com compared with the previous examples, I'm using uh, a big data set, which is uh, n multiplied 500. But I only need to do n length samples for each kernel of functions to simulate when you have a large data can be stored in CPU memories, but you cannot fit into the small memory in GPU. So in that way, you can only to segment data into the few trunks, uh, which is length of n. So at the start of the main functions, I first initialized the uh, start event and stop e event to record the time for the start time and the stop time for my program. Then firstly to record uh, the start time. Now after that, we going to initialize the, the memories will be using GPU and CPU and allocate the memory and initialize the A array and B array. And the second loop functions, we are iterate all the trunks of the data. Then the step will be n. What we do in the loop, func loop function, we are going to copy the memory uh, from the host, uh, then to the GPU, and the host from GPU for B array. Then call the kernel function. After we calculate C in the GPU, we copy it back to the um, CPU C array. So here it's typos need to be host underscore C plus I here. Then after we done all the operations, we record the stop marker. And here is you need to very be careful. Um, at when the programs enter into this line, it doesn't necessarily means all the CUDA operation has been done. To fully capture the running times in the CUDA, we need to um, call the CUDA event synchronize to let the host to sit here to wait for all the operations done, then uh, return the stop marker. And eventually, we can calculate the difference between start time and the stop time to get elapsed time. So here we can see the programs take uh, 44 milliseconds to complete all the run. Now, uh, I'm going to introduce CUDA stream. Uh, CUDA stream is a sequence of operations that executed on the device in all the issues by host code. As previous examples mentioned, uh, actually, we, if we don't specify a streams uh, in the CUDA program, it still use the default stream zero. Then what will happen 
uh, in previous example is that basically it's adding all the operation we define um, to CUDA into a single stream. That means uh, those operations will be ordered in a queue. Once we add in the operation in the queue, that means the previous order has already been finished. So in the worst case, what we see in the queue is something like this. If you remember this previous examples, we first uh, copy a trunk, a uh, trunk of A to a GPU, then copy the B to a GPU, and a call kernel function, then copy C back from GPU. If those operations still has not been complete, we will still continue to add operation uh, to, to copy the second trunk of A to GPU, copy B to the GPU. You can see the full of operation has been stored in a queue of the single stream. Then one advantage for use CUDA stream is people used to use multiple streams to uh, parallel and improve the application. We already know parallel computing in the CUDA uh, by each thread and each block can help us to speed up application. Then use multiple stream is an, also another a uh, very advanced technique to parallel things, but in different uh, level. Um, in multiple streams application, I would say it's all more like high level parallel. Uh, the assumption is that, um, so for for the application of the memory copy and kernel here in GPU actually is done by different computations unit. Uh, if we get back to the single stream example, the GPU is waiting for the copy finish, then call the kernel computing units. So what 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 is happening is copy A to GPU first, then wait this finish, then only call the memory copy B to GPU, then kernel function. So what we can do is we can separate this into, for example, two streams, we have stream zero and stream one, and try to um, run the memory copy and the kernel functions units at the same time. So what we can do is we at stream zero for the A trunk, first A trunk and B trunk, we call memory copy, and stream one, we just uh, hang here. Uh, of course, there's assumption here, uh, each of operations has uh, taken similar time slots. Then after we copy B to GPU, we call kernel function. At the same time, we start copy another trunk of A to GPU. After the kernel function down in the stream is zero, we hang out here. Because stream one is also still need to use the memory copy units to copy B to GPU. After that, stream one will call kernel function. At these times, we can use the memory copy units again to copy C back from GPU. And the same thing, we just uh, cross over the memory copy, the usage of memory copy and the kernel functions so that we can utilize the memory copy units and the kernel units at the same time in that way to speed up things. Then let me try to refactor my previous examples by using multiple streams to speed up the application. We are still using the same kernel function. The difference is that we initialize two stream here and uh, create a stream. And we also uh, separate uh, two sets of the GPU memory, which is called DYA0, B0, C0, A1, B1, C1. So, so the sets of one, zero will be used for string zero, sets of one will be used for the string of one. Another difference is that for the host memory allocation, we are using CODA host allocate for instance, because it will allocate page locked memory, which will be used to for string. I won't go into more deeply um, to explain what's the page locked memory. Um, at this time, maybe you can just uh, remember 
always use CUDA host allocations for CUDA stream. After that, we initialize the A and B array in the host. In the second for loop, um, the different step, you will run those operations in the two fold. First fold, we are focused on the stream zero. We copy the memory from the host to the device. Uh, we expand kernel function here by using the same grids and thread. Uh, this zero is how many memory we are allocate. Here we want to use any shared memory there, so it keep it zero. So this is best for stream zero. And after this kernel function done, so we just uh, copy the memory back from the C. Next, we are going to copy memory from uh, host A to device A1 and B1. Then for the host A data, of course, we are have to plus N here because this is the next trunk of the zero, A0, B0 trunk here. So we all plus N. Um, same thing here, stream one defined by a kernel function. And we copy the memory back to the host C uh, plus I plus N trunk. Very similar for the previous examples, we need to ask stream to wait here to make sure all the operation complete so we can mark the stop time. Uh, so it's called the CUDA stream signalize. Then we want to know what's the time uh, once all the operation has been finished. So we do the CUDA event record stop and the synchronize stop here. Eventually we calculate the times um, to take to finish all the operations. In the end, we free uh, the memory for the device A0, B0, 0, same thing for A1, B1, C1. We also need to destroy the stream for 0 and 1. Uh, for this improved versions, we can see the time is much better than the previous one, uh, which means like uh, it's, it's great to use the multiple streams uh, techniques. Um, all right, so hopefully this uh, improvement makes sense, and you can try to apply this technique to uh, other applications. Um, feel free to leave any comments and questions uh, about this topic. Um, then I'll see you in next video.